guys. So I just landed in Puerto Rico. I'm super excited. Um, we're just at the airport, but I just wanted to say hi. And you can totally see the joy in my eyes. I cannot wait to see what this country has to offer. Um, and I know we're not going to see the whole thing, but uh, we landed in San Juan. We're going to Rincon, which is on the completely different side of the island. It's about two and a half, maybe three hours driving. Um, so we're going to, you know, venture into there. It's a yoga retreat. So I'm excited to learn about yoga. <laughs> but it, the interesting thing is the guy that we're with, his name is Douglas. He doesn't just show you the poses. He explains how they affect your body. And he was explaining that yoga has um, healing aspects of it. So you can actually heal certain parts of your body. It's all about realigning to center yourself, which I was like, if you would have told me this, I would have taken yoga a long time ago because I thought it was just boring to like move and, I'm sorry for you yoga enthusiasts, you know, move around and do stuff like that. Yeah, I know it's like supposed to be like a spiritual connection thing, but I already have a very good connection with the spirit. So maybe later in life I would have done it. But since now I know it's healing and I'm into like the healing arts, I'm definitely really intrigued. So I'm gonna share it with you guys on my journey. So um, yeah, talk to you soon, bye. gonna see if we can rent a boat this is how far we are from the beach it's literally like just across the street and then there's the beach <laughs> this is our penthouse um, that we rented so it's all of this space that's a jacuzzi we have this area up here which we're letting the guy stay in because he deserves it he's the most peaceful humble amazing person on the planet um, there's an outside shower over here. It's this bathroom. Okay, and then we're gonna go downstairs real quick and I'll show you the rest of the place. Good morning. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'll see you soon. We have like these really cool stairs that wind down. And it's interesting because we didn't even see that part until this morning. So this is the living room. We have a balcony here which connects um, to my room. And then we have a washer and dryer which to me is a lifesaver if you know me. And we have one room in here which has like bunk beds and a couch. This is the bathroom downstairs. This is one that the girls use. But I think the walls have been going upstairs too. And this is my room, which is a complete and total mess. <sighs> because I just got ready this morning and threw everything out of my luggage. <laughs> but it was really pretty. Um, before. Oh. And of course, for some reason, the universe keeps giving me mirrored closets, if you've seen my room. Oh, hold on one second. Of course. Oh, where's the bird? There it is. I have two birds nesting here. Look at that. It's my new friend. Hi. So cute. Hi, it's me. So yeah, everywhere I go lately, I've had my closets, which I love, because I've always wanted to be a dancer and have my own studio. So maybe at some point that'll happen. Somebody told me I was supposed to work with autistic kids and dance and help them to express themselves, so that's a possibility. But yeah, so this is our penthouse on the beach. Um, very excited, very happy, very humble. Um, and now I'm gonna go get food for everybody. Bye. This is the divine joy which is my life. So I literally went to uh, outside of our apartment and then I turned and I found this which is gorgeous it's like a private beach like our apartment is literally one driveway over and um, I was trying to find the supermarket <laughs> but uh, 
Look at look at this. It's beautiful. A little private beach. Oh my god. It's like a dream. This looks like the part like Jamaica. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. So I'm gonna tell everybody about it. Oh look at this little creek. Um, everybody about it so that we can check out this beach too. Oh, it's so exciting. Hey guys, so I am at the pool <laughs> and um, I'm at the pool in Puerto Rico and I am really excited. I just came back from the beach but I didn't really want to film that because it's like my personal moment with the universe and God and um, but I did go into the water and I asked um, it to please cleanse me and to remove any negative energy that might be in my um, body, anything that may have caused me to say things that I wouldn't normally say. I know I'm going, I'm dealing with disappointment and anger recently, <laughs> um, but I shouldn't be, and I know better than that. I just don't know why I'm acting like a child. So I was like, please remove any of this stuff from me that doesn't belong there. Please help me heal. Please remove any toxins that might be in my body. Um, you know, please let me get back to a perfect state uh, where my body works with itself. And when I've been eating, um, you know, they say, say grace and blessings, but if you talk to your food, it actually responds. Um, and it's interesting because I was telling that because the guy that is doing the yoga upstairs, he had a plate of food and he just said blessings and then started eating. And I'm like, that's interesting because when I talk to my food, <laughs> I say, hey, can you please take just the nutritional stuff from the food? Um, and then just discard anything that doesn't belong in my body or is not going to serve me for my higher purpose. Um, he looked at me and he's like, that's amazing that you even say that. I know, there are these trucks that come by all the time and they are this loud. Maybe like once every two hours. But he's like, you know, you're amazing because a lot of people don't even do that and, and just what you're saying is, is very interesting. And I'm like, yeah, I just want... You know, and I, and I thank the food for my sacrifice. That's what he said was amazing. I was like, thank you for your sacrifice so that I can have the nutrition that I need. Um, and I learned that from Thich Nhat Hanh's um, Blue Cliff Mon Monastery in upstate New York. I highly recommend everybody go there, you know, make your donation and learn. And they said that um, in the monastery that you have to thank your food because there's a sacrifice that comes with that food. You know, it was alive, it was living, it grew for you and you have to think about where it comes from. And then there was another Buddhist that told me, it was in Thich Nhat Hans, it was somebody else that said, think about how your food got to your plate. If you're eating fish, the fish came from an ocean. It was ripped out of the ocean, not by choice. Um, it died for you, uh, which kind of makes you think about Jesus. Um, it died for you and then it was fished by somebody. That person on a boat brought it to someone else who prepared it and packed it. Then it was shipped somewhere. Somebody received that and then it was shipped to a supermarket and then that person put it out or to the market and then you bought it. So you picked it amongst all the other fish to eat and then that is your fish that you should be eating. But you should be grateful for the sacrifice that the fish made because it didn't choose to be taken you know and that's why I think it's interesting that the Native Americans like when when they kill something they apologize and they say thank you for your sacrifice and they're grateful not I mean I don't know about all of them I'm just telling you what I've learned along my journey I mean I can't speak for everything and everybody I can just speak about what I've learned and what I've been taught and how it makes sense to me I know I read a book a while ago it's called vision quest I think it was Dan something um, and that was one of the most impactful books I've ever read. I actually have to read it again. I know it was about a guy, a Caucasian guy, who's being trained by a Native American on how to survive and how to connect with the spiritual world. And it was a really great book. I actually had to read it for school. That's why I love my high school, St. Francis Prep. They made us read the most enlightening books ever. Um, but I'm going to read it again and then tell you guys about it. If you guys get a chance to read it, I'll put the link below where you can buy it. Um, but it's called Vision Quest, just to make sure that you get the right one. Uh, what else? So we were talking about that and I was just in the ocean. Oh, and he was saying that when you talk to water, you know, because we were talking about the four elements and like fire signs and then um, earth signs and then, no, fire signs and air signs and earth signs and then water signs. And he was telling me there's something called Pitta. And it's so interesting because he just came out of nowhere last night at two o'clock in the morning. 
him in the car and he was talking to me about these things and he says picked up is fire and water and in my mind I'm like oh God. <laughs> and he's like it's fire and water and what it is is it's how they work with each other um, so he's like there's pizza which is fire and water there's kappa which is earth and water and then there's vata which is air and space and this is all Ayurvedic so I'm learning so much and mind you I we just landed yesterday so this is all the stuff that I'm absorbing from him in just 24 hours less than 24 hours I uh, know 24 hours um, but we were together for like the flight and stuff like that and he was telling me that fire and water meet each other because they help each other out and their diet it has to be heavy so they tend to eat heavy foods which is true but when they're out of balance they need to eat light things like uh, cucumbers and salads and things of that nature then he said that there's uh, I, I wasn't paying attention to anything else because I was just still stuck on the fact that he put fire and water together and then I was like okay um, so we've been having all these conversations like you know randomly this other girl Nadia was talking about um, her spiritual journey and like how miracles have happened and coincidences and, and she brought something up which was amazing and she's like yeah she's like when I moved to New York in 2005 I thought this was a phenomenal story she's like I had a cab driver pick me up and drive me to work and then she's like when I was going home she's like I didn't know my address she's like I didn't remember it she's like and, I, and there was no way for her to get it so she had to call the cab driver and ask him if he remembered her and if he remembered her address and he's like yeah he's like I'll come get you and then he brought her home because she had just got to New York it was her first day and she's like this was before smartphones now this think about that 2005 that's only 12 years ago she's like this is before smartphones this is before GPS this is before any of that stuff she's like this is Brooklyn before it was gentrified she was living in she's like then I lived in Harlem before it was gentrified she's like so the people now can't even remember a time like that and I was like I can <laughs> well I remember you know and she's like so I had no way of getting my address you know she's like I you know I, we didn't have access to computers as easily for her to like go on and check everything she's like everything was done by like mail and paper um, and she's like so it was like shocking to me to remember that this was only 12 years ago 12 years ago before smartphones were like a thing isn't that crazy isn't that think about that you know um i don't know it's wild it's wild how quickly we've evolved uh, technologically um but yeah i was asking mother earth to please cleanse me now it's raining which i think is a blessing that i'm always grateful for so i might have to move this back a little bit but um i just wanted to come into the pool and then just because i love pools <laughs> and I, nobody's here so i have it to myself and it's raining so nobody's gonna be here um, and just enjoy it. Uh, I love the rain when I'm on vacation, I'm, except for when we were in Portugal because I was wearing all new clothes and my clothes were getting ruined and I had suede shoes and it was raining all the time. Um, but it would have been nice every now and then, but I'm gonna actually move this back. Okay. And um, yeah, so I'm going to finish this video because I'm gonna go for a swim, but I just wanted to share that with you that when you're in the ocean, I, I always use the ocean to cleanse myself. Not only is it good for your skin, you know, like that's what I was always taught. Like it's really good for your skin. But you can ask the ocean. Oh, he was saying that. He said water has a different vibration level. We, we are 85% water. So when you talk to water, it takes on whatever you tell it. And he was saying that they did a study where they talked to water um, and they told it positive things. And then they talked to water and they told it negative things. And that the people that drank it had those reactions. So what you put out is what you get in in every way. And I was telling him I have plants and I talk to them all the time. And that my old plant that I had that had a makeover um i talked to it every day and i apologize and i'm like i'm so sorry you know like please grow for me and i love you and i'm happy that you're back and it, it vibrates it, literally i walk in and it vibrates like it's happy to see me um and then it's growing and it's growing fast like really fast and i just can't wait for it to get bigger and stronger than it was before um but i told him i just bought herbs and i started talking to my herbs because when i read the book the celestine prophecy um by james redfield it was talking about how the monks and the priests used to talk to food and how that energy of the food then transferred into um, you know people and I never forgot that so when I started growing plants when my friend left me the plant I started talking to it and I think that's why it grew so strong so I know it's gonna grow stronger and better than before and then um, now that I have my plants I have my aloe plant that grew super big really fast and my herbs so I'm starting to talk to everything. And I've always talked to the universe and I always say, protect me, please don't let sharks bite me. Because <laughs> I'm always like nervous and stuff when I'm um, in the water. 
and then I always ask it to uh, remove the toxins from my body. I've been doing that since I was a kid because my mom told me that's what the ocean does. So I'm like, hey, can you please clean my body, make it soft, and you know, remove the toxins from it. Um, but this time I was like, please just remove any negativity as well. I don't want any of it in my body. I don't want to poke or snap or snip, be snippy or anything ever. Like I just don't want that in my life anymore. And if I meet people like that, I'm just gonna want to be tolerant enough to walk away and say, it's nice meeting you, you know? Um, I've had a huge shift in consciousness and in attitude lately, and it was a lot, it had a lot to do with the people that I was around. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it was a lesson. I'm very grateful for the people that I've been around, especially my friend more than anything, because because of him, I've had so many awakenings and so many lessons, and he was a key. You have key people in your life, and it's because they open doors and they help you evolve spiritually, and he was a key, and I, I believe I was a key for him, I hope. Um, if not, I'm a key for him now. <laughs> But I think I was. Um, so yeah. And then I was talking about, um, we were talking actually, uh, about why he got into yoga and how he was a principal ballet dancer for 15 years um, at the Kansas Ballet Studio, Kansas City Ballet Studio. And then he got into yoga and he's been doing that for 32 years. Um, and I kept telling him, I was like, you need to be a brand. Like, I, I wish he would give me permission to introduce him. Uh, I think he should be a brand. I think people should come and take his classes. Everything he says is knowledge. And all he wants to do is share and spread knowledge about how food works in your body, how the movements work, how energy works. Um, he's the one that told me about, there was a test, right? And they took three balls of rice and they, they made them into little balls and they put one in a jar, three, you know, each one in its own jar. And one they said positive things to, the other one they said negative things to, and the last one they just ignored. And it broke my heart when he said that. He saw it. I was like, because it's like neglect. Like, how do you do that? How do you ignore somebody? That's why I get so upset when people neglect me or reject me or like ignore me. Because I'm like, why are you ghosting me? <laughs> this generation is the worst. Like, why would you do that? They're all like that, though. They're like, I'll get back to you when I feel like it. I'm like, um appreciate the fact that somebody even thought of you for the moment and that they're calling you, you should pick up the phone. And if I don't pick up the phone, it's literally because I can't. And I call you back when I can. Uh, but most people just do it and I've seen them. They're like, I'll get it later. I don't want to talk to that person. And that's like, it's not good. You, want, you don't want to put that kind of energy and karma out because then people are not going to take you seriously and they're going to ignore you. And that could be why things happen that way. But it's really important to respect each person that comes into your life and appreciate them and appreciate their presence, appreciate the fact they want to talk to you, appreciate the, the fact that they hold you in high regard, that they're calling you for advice and and they're choosing you to talk to and share their life with or whatever they're going through at that moment, which is why they called you. It's really important to appreciate and be grateful for the people in our lives that hold us in high regard. Um, and we were just talking about gratitude and graciousness and. Um, I keep telling him like there's no random encounters like the woman that we met at the airport. As a woman, I kept looking at her and her husband, and they kept staring at me. And I'm like, I feel like they have a message for me. And it's interesting because she told me she said, when you stop being, she was an OBGYN. When you stop being passionate about what you do, you should just stop because you're not going to put your heart into it, and you're not going to get the results that you wanted. And she was an OBGYN where she would like help people, genuinely help people. Um, get better and help women because she understood what it was to be a woman and find out if there anything was wrong and help them when they were you know having their baby and talk to them and get them excited and it was a very spiritual thing for her and then it turned into you have to see six patients an hour so it's 10 minutes she's like what am I gonna do in 10 minutes it takes longer than 10 minutes to actually do the procedure you know she's like I got to talk to them to find out if anything's wrong and then it made me wonder that maybe that's why so many people are sick is because they don't have the time with the doctor that they need to explain what's wrong so the doctor can um, say like, hey, maybe this is wrong, maybe we should run some tests, you know, what's going on? Because you only have a little bit of time and they're trying to get you in and get you out so they can make that money because of the insurance companies. You know, where before it was like private pay, you only went to the doctor when you needed to, but you paid for that visit and it was worth what you were paying because you went when you needed to. You know, you understood that that was part of your healing. Um, and now they just rush you in, rush you out. Uh, they're not able to diagnose things. That's why some people don't find out they have stage three or four cancer because the doctor never had the time to really properly 
give them the, the right physical or they're asking the right questions or you know catch up with them and have that bedside manner um, you know remember the doctors used to come to your house and do house calls they used to come with a little black bag with all their stuff and do the house calls and things are very different now uh, we've lost that personal touch um, so it was very interesting I feel like that was part of our lesson and then we were talking about what's going on with you know with the world and not necessarily the government, but kind of like that. And she's like, you know, when people get fed up, change will come. She's like, they haven't gotten fed up yet. She's like, when people got fed up in the past, you know, especially with, you know, they boycotted the buses and whatever, she's like, they made the changes that they needed to make, you know? She's like, but they're not fed up enough. You're not, they're angry, but they're not fed up enough. It's very interesting. Um, she was like an angel. Like, even when you talk to her, her, her demeanor, her manner, um, her body language, it was so at peace. She was probably late 60s maybe early 70s. I've been meeting really amazing people and I've always gravitated towards older people because I love knowledge and I love learning and I feel like everybody has a lesson, you know? Um, the last few years I've been hanging out with much younger people um, and I feel like I was meant to just teach them whatever I was meant to teach them, you know, so we came across each other's path for a reason. Um, but I'm really happy with where my journey is right now. I've met I've met great masters and teachers in my life. Um, great masters and teachers. And I want to promote a woman named Carla Tara. You guys, look her up, carlatara.com. She's a relationship love coach. She was the tantric teacher that I've been telling you about. Um, that She's 75 years old, so imagine all of that knowledge. And she's been doing tantra for over 30 years. She's, been, she's lived in India. She's done so many things. So I definitely look her up and, and try to take some of her classes. She's in New York. Um, and I really like her a lot. Um, I think I'm gonna take her Awakening Your Inner Goddess class uh, on June 30th. I'm just gonna see if I can come up with that and do that class, I like it a lot. It's a $95 class, but it's a really good class. Um, I'll put the link below also if you want to attend that class. But she, I believe that like you have to get them before they're gone. And I feel like she has so much love and knowledge and she said it, she's like, I could retire right now and go to Maui, you know? because that's where she has her, her vacation home. She's like, but I choose to help people, you know? And she's like, I just want to give as much love and spread as much knowledge as I can before I go because she has so much. And I think it's admirable, you know? Like, I'm only 37 and I'm trying to spread with you. The moment I, I, the moment I experience something, I'm like, oh guys, let me tell you what happened. So, you know, so I can only imagine what it is to have amassed that much knowledge and just want to share it with everyone that, you know, come across. Um, the, the earth is definitely shifting and we're becoming more aware of it. I think we need to start respecting everything more. The plants, the trees. Uh, Puerto Rico is so clean. It is so clean. Everywhere you go, it's super clean. So I really like that. Um, it's a beautiful country. It's beautiful people. They're amazing. So kind, so generous, so nice. Uh, so full of love and laughter. Even the woman that I sat next to on the airport, like on the plane, she was... This is another woman. You know, she came because her sister died and her whole family was coming. Her sister was 82. And she's really sad. She was the fourth one of eight that had passed. And they all passed away in May. And that, she's like, so when May comes, we all get like really nervous and scared. And I'm like, I totally, I totally understand that. All of them passed away. She said from May 5th through the 26th or something like that. And I was like, wow. Um, so. I don't know if that you know, means anything, but... And then even the Puerto Rican art, which I'm going to see if I can take some pictures of. I have to learn how to edit video so you guys can see all the videos together. Um, but I'm going to go now. Oh my god, time flies when I talk to you. Um, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Hey, um, I completely forgot to tell you the story about the rice. So. The rice that they talked to positively turned into um, stayed together, and and it after the test it was fine. It looked the way that it did before. It maintained itself. It was nurtured. It was okay. The second rice, the one that they talked negatively to, fell apart and turned into like a liquid. And the third rice that they completely ignored turned into like this black, liquidy disgustingness. And then I said, "Wow, that's interesting. That's the difference between darkness and light." And the reason that I was so like passionate when he was like, and then they ignored it, and I was like, like I just, 
you know? And he like looked at me like, wow, you know, you're very sensitive to that. And I'm like, yeah, because I don't like being ignored. I don't like ignoring people. I like trying to include people if I can. And then if they disclude themselves, which isn't a word, <laughs> but if they like say, oh no, I'll make, you know, I'll make it if I can, or they, they're not part of it because they've made that choice, it's up to them. But I always try to include people. I always try to have them in my life. I love people, you know? So I know only because in all honesty, the last three years, I've only had one person neglect me and reject me and ignore me. <laughs> and it was really painful and it hurts and I don't like it and I don't want to do that to anybody and I don't want anybody to ever have to feel that. So it, like, I feel it more when I hear that other people go through it. Because other, th other than that, I've always had people love me and give me attention and do the right thing and be polite. And I think it's important that you be that person for everyone in your life if you can. Um, you know, don't like do it to the point where you bend over backwards and you lose yourself. But it's important to include people if you can and to make them feel welcome and to, you know, welcome strangers. But be careful. <laughs> be careful. Because <laughs> all that glitters is not gold. <laughs> huh. It's a shell. Oh, that's another thing I wanted to talk to you about. The shell. So that's my like. <clears throat> I, I see souls, right? And I can see your soul and your essence and who you are without knowing you, right? And so for me, I look at people more at people for who they are. But I notice that a lot of people in this world, especially now with this like swipe right, swipe left society where you discard people without even getting to know them, it's like you're literally throwing them, throwing them out because they don't look the way you want them to look. You have to realize that this is a shell. And it's a shell for a reason. And I always tell people, you attract the person you're meant to attract because you look the way you look because that person's gonna be attracted to you. Nobody else matters. You know, everything else is just practice. It's just background. It's just, it's just practice. It's part of life. It's part of your journey. But that one person, that out of everyone that they met, they're like, you're beautiful and I love everything about you. I love your curves. I love this. I love your hair. I love your scent. Like, and vice versa, women for men. It's because you were meant for that person and they were meant for you. Everyone else is just background. But what we've done in this society is we've flipped it to the point where all people care about is what you look like. And then they get to know you later. It's almost like you have to look a certain way or else I'm not even going to try to get to know you. Meanwhile, you're missing out on the person that could have been the best person for you. You know, and I've been forcing myself to go out with people, but they're not for me. <laughs> um, you know, but like, you know, it's just whatever. So I wanted to just remind you guys that this is just a shell. And especially us as humans, you can get skinny, you can get fat, you can get disfigured, you can be perfect, you can be born with a problem that's looked at as a defect when it's really not. It's actually a gift and later on you'll see why you, why you were born this way. Um, but look at the people, don't look at the shell. Because the shell can be deceiving. Some of the most nastiest people are beautiful packages. Some of the kindest people are packages that people would discard or not really pay attention to. So just try to get to know people. Follow your gut. I mean, if you see someone and you're like, mm, I don't want anything to do with that person, then don't, don't, because your gut is always right, you know? But that's your gut, not your eyes. Does that make sense? 